All right, so let's continue, shall we? <laughs> Sleepy. That was a really big yawn, Keiichi Kun. <laughs> Why is she talking to him like he's a dog? Oh, who made a big yawn? Keiichi Kun? Right now, I'm not a dog. <laughs> Do you want me to rub your belly? I'm usually awake once it's time to eat, but it doesn't look like I can do it today. I was watching TV until late last night. I'm so tired right now. Was one of those ranchy, t raunchy TV shows you loved so much on last night? <laughs> How extremely vile! Don't jump to conclusions. It's perfectly normal for boys. Nothing to be ashamed about. Rika not patting my head only made me feel worse. Could you just let me pass out this lunch break? No, seriously. Ma, you think I would just sit here and allow that? I'll get really angry if you disturb me. Really angry. <sighs> Yawn. Oh. That was just dreadful. Just so sleepy. I slumped my head onto the desk and drifted off into an afternoon nap. It seemed that Satoko had responded, but I pretended not to hear. Cut it out, Satoko-chan. Keiichi-kun fell asleep. His sleeping face, so cute. You can take him home later. Let him be for now. Let's move over the, e over the air. Be rude to Keiichi if we bothered him now. Because Sean really is a good girl. <laughs> Let's not wake him up even if the teacher comes back. I take that back. The excuse that I didn't sleep much last night because I was watching TV was a lie. Shocker. I was in bed at the usual time, but because of the conversation with Uichi-san that afternoon, I didn't get much sleep. Just spending the day like this, it's almost as if the incident with Tomatake-san didn't happen at all. It made me think, was Uichi-san just trying to deceive me? But it was probably the truth. One thing was certain, I couldn't speak to anyone about it. He wanted my assistance, but I really didn't know anything about it. If I knew I wasn't going to be of any help, if I knew I wasn't going to be of any help, I probably would have listened. I probably wouldn't have listened in the first place. It ended up with me, again, regretting learning something I didn't need to know. If I had ever, if I had never learned about it, I would, without a doubt, be goofing off with the rest of them right now. I couldn't help but resent Oishi-san for this. <laughs> Huh? When was that? I heard he wasn't there the next day. It appears he vanished the night of the Watanagashi. Mion whispered to keep others from listening, but I could hear it clearly. On the other hand, Reina's voice was even harder to pick up. But I could still tell that she was quite upset. It couldn't be. Are they talking about Tomatake-san? Can he... Itake? Not sure. That's all I know. I would have to feign ignorance about this topic because I needed to keep it a secret. Rather than waking up and being forced to lie to join the conversation, it was much easier to sit here and pretend I was asleep to listen in on their discussion. Wait, why did I have to pretend to be asleep while eavesdropping on my friend's conversation? The guilt. Stung. So, and me, there are others, right? Two? But they don't know if it's from the curse or if this was an... Onikakushi. Onikakushi? Onikakushi. To be hidden away by a demon? What mysterious phrase. I did, however, get the feeling it meant nothing good. Eh, oh... Uh, there was nothing, another, right? Right? If it's Oyashiro-sama's, yeah. But, 
But this year, the, at all, Grandma and the mayor had talked about it. Seems they talked to the police about it beforehand. They said they'd take care of whatever happens this year without causing a commotion. Then, without us knowing it, someone had it them. You mean... Abby. Next could me... I wonder... Don't worry. You got home safely. But it's not allowed, right? That was a long time ago. Let's stop talking about this. Amidst the uncomfortable ma uh, mood, both of them went silent. The entirety of the conversation was still a bit unclear, but a few parts caught my attention. First of all, the, tor the term onikakushi. To be demoned away. By the context it was used in, I would guess it's similar to being spirited away. I suspected that was what it meant, uh, because Tomotake-san and that woman, it really bugged me that I don't know her name, vanished after the Watanagashi. The next thing that stuck out was when Reina said, there's another one, right? Mion also said, if it's on uh, Oyashiro-sama's, yeah, responding to something. If it's Oyashiro-sama's curse, then there had to be two victims, is that what she meant? Come to think of it, I remember Mion saying the beginning that they didn't know if it was from the curse or if it was a case of Onikakushi. It seems that the curse and being demoned away are different things, and they were phenomena that were paired together. I recall Tomotake-san's terrible end. That wasn't something as elegant as disappearing. That horrendous end would be described as cursed. Then the woman with him, you mean she vanished because she was demoned away? What I do know is that there is normally an even number of victims of the curse proper. And the last point that bothered me was Reina. Reina was frightened. For what reason, I didn't know. However, she knew that something had made her a potential target for Oyashiro-sama's curse. If I recall correctly, Oyashiro-sama should be the guardian deity of Hina Miyazawa. Isn't a guardian deity supposed to defend the citizens and drive out invaders? If I recall correctly, yesterday, Oishi-san said that originally the targets were enemies of the village, but recently there was no longer any distinction between them or regular outsiders. But if that was the case, then I would think that I'd be more likely target having moved here more recently than Reina. From her composure, I could infer that she was grimly certain that she would be next. I should probably relay what I just heard now to uh, Uishi-san. Informing the police of what I heard by eavesdropping on my friends while pretending to be asleep it made me feel terrible. It raised a few questions and left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Would it be better not to seek the answers to those questions? As I continued to learn more and more, I felt like I would fallen past the point of no return. I would definitely regret this one day. I would definitely regret ever having learned of these events. The teacher approaches. Keiji-san, you must awaken. In the distance, I could hear the ring of the handbell signaling the start of afternoon classes. Gah, I couldn't sleep at all. I hastily opened my eyes and raised my head up. It was in that moment when I leaned against the back of my seat. There was a thumbtack stuck on the back of my chair with tape. Circumstantial evidence was enough. Guilty without trial. Capital punishment. I fiercely jumped up from my seat. And I tripped as if my feet were tangled up. My shoelaces had been tied together. Not bad, Satoko. While I was sleeping, you were able to conceal your presence to pull off this fine piece of work. The teacher came in right as I was about to pull off my shoes and tackle Satoko. Did you not notice that our teacher has arrived, Keiji-san? Take your seat. Clomp, clomp, wish, biff. Not caring one bit, I made her uh, eat a flick to the forehead. <laughs> Keiji-san is being mean. Hey, don't pick on the younger kids, Mabara-san. Kun, whatever. Apologize to her.
I saw Satsuko stick her tongue out at me. That little brat. Come on, mabara -kun. Yeah, yeah, I'll apologize. Sorry, Satsuko-san. In any case, I apologize, even if it was a completely insincere tone of voice. Damn her. I'll remember this. Kei-chan, Kei-chan, get your revenge at the club meeting. Take your seat, take your seat. I sat down after Mion told me to. She'd switched to class representative mode. Shit, I still have pizza. Yeah, like fucking Type Moon is doing anything with Tsukuhime. Besides, I'm pretty sure you can't sue over making someone look like a character. I'm pretty sure if they directly ripped her off, then they could sue. But being inspired by a character is not suable. With the boring classes finished, school was finally over for the day. Now then, what should we do for our club today? Personally, I'd like to play the deduction game one more time. I was hardly able to play it last time because of Uishi-san. Reina and I were even able to test out our strategy. Weren't even able. That's right. Today, Keiji-kun and I will be victorious. <laughs> what should we do? We've never played the same game two days in a row before. Why not try asking me? Mion looked over her shoulder as we made eye contact. She slowly tapped her palm with her fist as her face suddenly lit up. Oops. I completely forgot I need to go help my uncle today. Sorry guys, not today. Helping your uncle? Aren't you a little goody two-shoes? Sorry, really. I really did forget. Well then, sorry guys. This old man is heading back home now. Yeah, it doesn't smell suspicious. Mion left us with that and rushed off to the exit after snatching up her bag. You see me, Chan? She sometimes uh goes uh, goes to help out her at uh, goes to help out at her uncle's shop in town. Fuck me, I can't words. I thought she wasn't the type to get caught up in such bothersome stuff. She said that she gets paid for it. It's quite a bit of spending money from what I hear. I see. She was able to pay for that mountain of games with what she saved up from there. But that... Wouldn't you call that a part-time job? Isn't that against school policy? There's a clause that states household chores are excluded. Is that what she's calling it? So what now? Pass on the club today? So, we're done today, I guess. I guess. Wanna be fine without the club president? Let's do this. I opened the club locker and began searching for the deduction game from the ever-growing pile of games. Ah, here it is. The deduction game from yesterday. And I had to stop just as I was getting the hang of it. At the very least, I wanted to repay Satsuko for what she did during the afternoon break. I do not mind. But is that fine for Reina and Rika? Reina, San, and Rika? If Keiji-kun wants to so badly, I wouldn't mind playing for a bit. I think it's better if we do it when we have everyone together. And she says it like that. Hmm. I wanted to go shopping if there wasn't a club meeting today. Going to buy soy sauce and other things. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot. Well, I guess since it's been a while, I should go treasure hunting. What's this now? Everyone was no longer in the mood for club activities. If I kept on trying to push the matter, it may make them realize I had a trick up my sleeve. 
Oh well, I'll give up this time. And I was really looking forward to playing it. I shuffled through the cards as if I was still caught up on it. At the next opportunity, I shall give you a sound thrashing. The murderer is Satoko. <laughs> the murder weapon is the pistol. It was you after all. Wh what did you say? Then I'll just... Satoko looked through the cards on the desk and stuck out three of them at me. <laughs> the murderer is Keiichi. In the lounge with the rope. I don't need no rope. I'll just strangle you like this. Keiji san is such a beast! Phew! Well, I guess it's good that I got that out of my system. I'll remember this, Keiji san! Being picked on so much by Keiji kun. You poor thing. God damn it, Reina. Satsuko will remember this. Everyone got ready to go back home. I also helped gather up the scattered cards. I suddenly paused. They were just the suspect cards, but I noticed something strange. Reina, Satoko, Rika, Keichi, Mion, Satoshi. Satoshi? Not all the cards were made by us. Or at least... Every card besides this one was the name of a club member. Does this mean that this Satoshi fellow is a member? Is there someone in the class named Satoshi? I couldn't find anyone named Satoshi on the class roster stuck up on the wall. Keiji kun! Let's hurry and finish cleaning up! Being rushed by Reina, I finished up quickly. Satsuko and Rika-chan had already headed merrily for their lockers, so we were the only ones left in the classroom. Right now, Reina had already gotten her bag and was ready to leave. Reina. There must be quite a few people who transfer from this school, right? I tried asking Reina in a bit of a roundabout way. Reina made a troubled face and then answered. Yeah? Hinamiyazawa is a rural town, right? Some people transfer out every now and then. Then is Satoshi another one of those transfers? Sorry, I don't really know. There was a bit of a pause, but the answer was pretty much immediate. Uh, um, I'm not saying it to be mean. Just last year, I transferred in, so maybe I just missed him. So I didn't hear much about him. Sorry. I am not sure, sorry. Her answer was a lot like when she refused to tell me about the murder at the dam. I was saddened by her denial and felt a little bit of anger. I'm their friend, aren't I? Friends don't keep secrets from their friends, do they? Though I do appreciate that they kept that unsettling curse thing from me. But if everyone is worried about it, I'd rather be worried with them. That's... That's what it means to be friends, right? For a moment, I wondered just what kind of face I was making just then. These mixed feelings of sadness and annoyance. Keiji kun you're making a scary face. Why is that? Why? It was probably exactly the kind of face Reina said it was. It appeared my grim expression had frightened her. Uh, sorry. I was really looking forward to the club today. Just feeling down about it. I rustled Reina's hair. Let's go home. Dragging that awkward mood with us, we headed home. I wonder why. Why have I been getting this dumb feeling lately? I didn't know anything. I had nothing to worry about. I was, in just, I was just enjoying my everyday life. 
My long, outstretched shadow gave no answer to my naive inquiry. Inquiry, whatever. Keiji-kun, are you tired, maybe? Maybe? Reina timidly questioned the reason behind my mood. I'm sure my expression made this situation even more unsettling. You think so? Yeah. You seem to have been a little out of it ever since this morning. Maybe a cold? Physically, I was pretty sure I was in perfect health. May not seem like it, but I've had perfect attendance since elementary school. Rena continued on since I didn't give her an answer. It could be that the fatigue from moving has finally caught up to you. It's completely different from where you used to live after all. Of course you've gotten tired, since there's so much you need to get used to and remember. Maybe that's it. Yeah, it has to be. Reina was also like that at first, too. I can tell you, you know, or I can tell you no. Know. I wondered if Reina also experienced a slight bit of alienation last year that I was feeling right now. Thinking so, I felt that she was the only one who could understand how I felt. I'd like to hear about when you first came to Hina Miyazawa. How was it? Feeling I'd been drawn into the conversation, her face suddenly brightened. <laughs> It was the same as Keiji-kun. I didn't know the villagers' names at all. Mi-chan and the rest were all very kind, so I wasn't lonely. But I did still feel a little out of place. Reina told me all the details of when she had moved here. All of her first acquaintances and surprises. Worries and good times. So, Satoko got you too. Yeah. There was a thumbtack put on my chair. Poke. Then with that, I... Yeah. That really takes me back. When were you invited into the club? The first day? Nah. There wasn't a club at the beginning. It was formed partway through. One day she said we should stay after and hold a big game tournament. Come to think that Neon did say she was the first club president. Now I get it. This is a secret. But Mi-chan used to be really bad at the beginning. She'd never win. Huh? Mion, really? I can't even imagine that. She had to do most of the penalties that she came up with. Seriously, don't tell. I can't believe Mion was like that. So she gradually transformed into a monster who used any means necessary to win during that time. Mion is at her best when she's fighting dirty. I began making more friends beside Mi-chan after that, but yeah, it might have only been since she moved here that I finally felt like I had gotten used to it here. I guess Reina had also been left in the dark about Oyashiro-sama when she had moved when she had just moved here. I guess when they finally told me about Oyashiro-sama, I'd be more considered one of them. I wonder when I'll finally be considered one of them. Huh? Did you say something? No. Sorry. Just talking to myself. <laughs> Keiji-kun, you're silly. Reina was poking fun and laughing at me, and I couldn't help but laugh as well. But I suddenly stopped. Then, after making up my mind, I spoke. Hey, Reina. Is there something that everyone is keeping from me? Huh? No, not at all. You're lying, aren't you? Oh shit, we gonna do this now? Oh fuck. Reina suddenly stopped. Her expression was cold and intense. What do you mean by that? Keiji-kun? Her tune, her tone was still the same cheery and light-hearted one as before. You are, aren't you? Keeping something from me. Whoa, fuck! What the hell happened to the sprite? <laughs> After understanding what I meant, her expression grew even more intense. Seeing that face, I regretted saying something so rash. But she came back at me in a way I didn't expect. Oh my god! 
ルチくん Well then, Keiichi Kun, aren't you keeping something from us? Huh? Her tone didn't change, but it was the first time I'd seen this expression from Reina. Without her gaze pierced through me, I couldn't believe this was the same Reina. Oh shit! Oh damn, we into some real shit. Aren't you? God, I was just complaining about it feeling slow. God, I'm finally, finally happy something is happening. Lies or secrets? Aren't you? You are. Secrets. She didn't actually say that part, but she looked as if she did. The incident with Tomitake-san and how I felt alienated from the group. Even without having to think about it, there were things I knew that I felt guilty about. But I didn't tell everyone about what happened with Tomotake-san to be considerate. I was keeping it a secret just the same way they didn't tell me about Oyashiro-sama. Then, aren't we even? No, I'm not. No lies. Nor secrets. Liar! Her answer was instant and it shook me. Reina stared as if burrowing through me, watching me like a hawk. Why would you say I'm lying? Didn't you say that you were called into the teacher's room yesterday during the club meeting, Keiichi-kun? I know. You didn't go to the teacher's room. Well, shit. I swallowed hard. It clearly wasn't a bluff. She knew what happened. The teacher said you had a guest, didn't she? But you didn't talk at the entrance. You talked inside the car near the school gate. With some men we don't know. Reina knew everything. She knew that I was called out by Oishi-san and that I had heard about the incident with Tomitake-san as well. Did she know all of it? Exactly, who was that man? I don't know him. Why did someone you don't know have business with you? I, I want to know that myself. Then what did you talk about? It has nothing to do with you guys. It was a lie. Oh shit! Reina's scream echoed through the trees, sending frightened birds into the air. I couldn't exhale the deep breath I, deep breath I had t just taken. No, it was like I wasn't allowed to exhale. It was here I first realized. The person in front of me, she wasn't Reina Ryugu. Then who was it that was standing before me now? Who had assumed Reina's appearance? I held my breath for so long I could feel myself suffocating. Me? Right? And then she made a ex facial expression that Raina normally might have made. It didn't matter that it was Raina's usual smile. It chilled me to the bone. She drew closer to me. I felt her breath against my face. It wasn't the least bit exciting. Whoever this was with Raina's face was going to chew my nose right off. I cowered as I imagined that. Then she smirked as if she was able to see right through me. We also have secrets, just like how Keiji-kun has secrets. It was Reina's usual smile, but her eyes were still like that of a hawk's. Bringing her face close enough to mine to almost bump into my nose, she kindly persuaded me. I couldn't nod or shake my head. This person standing in front of me, this person who looked like Reina frightened me to my core. I was terrified knowing that she could hear the sound of me swallowing nervously. After what felt like an eternity, after a long empty silence, she finally spoke. Let's go! It's getting chilly! It was Reina again, 
smiling at me once more. She started walking as if nothing at all had happened. When I was released from her gaze, my legs gave out from under me and I slumped onto the ground. I wasn't able to lift a finger until Reina was out of sight. Who was... that? I felt cold. My body was drenched in sweat. I was finally able to form a coherent thought and ask myself once again, who was that person who looked like Reina Ryugu? Oh man, finally! Finally we're getting into the good shit! Finally!